In this video, I'm going to show you in a very easy way how you can search for multiple keywords on a column in Paraguay. Let's get started. Okay, I showed you a couple, I think a month ago, a report I did on salaries, data job salaries. It was based on real data. And I created two uh, tabs. One it was a salary tool and the other one was a job profile where I was listing the skills that were required for each job. To do this, I had to actually go and you know create a list of skills and then try to find them on the list. And I'm going to show you how I did that. It's actually very easy. There is a ways that you can do it using M, obviously, but this is like super easy and you will remember it. So I have here on the labor market the data. So this, this is the job that it uh, got pulled from Indeed.com. So it's the job ID, the description, the salary, blah blah. So what we're going to do. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a separate table that is going to contain all the information that we need to do the uh, job profile page. In this case, I'm just going to grab one column. On my case, I needed more, but just for this explanation, we don't need to pull all of them. The way I like to do it when I reference another table is I go and call it directly. So if you put the table name, which is this table name, and then between double square brackets, you put the columns that you need, then you will actually get that referencing from the other one so you don't have to call it twice so if you would like to add another column you just for example put it like that right job id and then you click enter and it will be grabbed from the previous table as a um, table here if you don't have the double brackets it will be a list you can convert it to a table but this does it directly okay now i have a table that describes the job types that I want, the skills that I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add column, custom column, and I'm going to like put it into this table, the skills that I want to check for. So this is going to be skills. And then in here, I'm just going to grab the skills types table, the same thing as we did before, but in a column. I'll show you what it does. It's actually quite neat trick. So it will create a table with the contents of the previous table for each row of the table. Obviously, if you have a gigantic, massive column, this might not be very effective, but most of the data in the world is small. This will work for you. Okay, so you can see that I have the skills type and I have the skill. I have both columns. If you just want to have one column, you don't need the entire table that you were referencing. You can put the, the column name here between brackets, like skill. In this case, we just need one. A few moments later. I think it's called the skill with a capital, yeah. So we just need the skill column. In my case, I needed both, so I imported everything. But just so you know, you can import only one column. And then you just expand everything. So now you will have... One job description, all keywords. One job, all keywords, right? You'll see it here. Now, how do we test for the keyword? Now it's a very simple transformation. You go to custom column. I'm going to write this yes or no. And then you're just going to do a text contains. Text contains, then the, what you would do normally. Contains. And then you're going to get, okay, go to description text and find me skills, right? And this will do it, but you know how Power Query works. You know that Power Query is case sensitive. So this will be a big problem because sometimes the skills will be listed with capital letters, sometimes it will not, you know, it's just pure text. So we need to make it case insensitive. And good news is that Power Query function text contains has an additional parameter that if you call it, it will make it case insensitive, which is exactly what you want, what we want. So going to paste that in, click OK, and then it's going to go row by row and say, do I have you, do you, uh, you know, is this skill available, is this skill available? And then when it finds it, it's going to call it true. You see, false, false, true, false, false, true. Obviously the false one we don't want. We just want to have the true ones, right? So 
here we have the skills that are available. Now I don't need this column anymore. I can just close and load. And then I have match which skills are available for each job. Okay? Easy. Obviously, there are other ways, as I mentioned, to do it, but it requires more brain power, and sometimes we don't have it. So this is a perfect solution. Okay, this is all for me for today. On Thursday, I'm going to show you the solutions for 25 days of Tax Fridays, day one to five. Okay, so I will do all five solutions in that video, and then on the week after, I will do week two and so on and so forth. So I will see you on Thursday. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.